Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss different categories of scheduling algorithms, which we consider like real-time scheduling algorithms. So as we have discussed real-time operating systems, in real-time operating system, you are aware about every task has an associated deadline. Okay. So if you are executing a program, and generally we consider if we are getting the correct output, then we consider there is a success. But in real time kind of scenario, although a program will generate a correct output, but if it is not able to meet the deadline, that we consider the, there is a failure rather than success. Okay. So here I have written like it refers to the scheduling task in real time operating system where the correctness of the system depends on two things. So what are those two things? One, the result must be correct. So the logical result, which we are expecting. Apart from this, the computation, also the timeline, okay, of the computation. So whatever the computation is, the program is doing, it need to be correct. And it must be meeting the deadline, then only the task will be considered as successfully executed, otherwise not. So let's take a problem and solve it. In this particular type of scheduling algorithm, we consider the priority is fixed. Okay. So priority is fixed means uh, priority will be decided based on the period. And here we are considering the task or the processes are periodic in nature. So let's say if I give some process IDs here. Okay. So let's say these are P1, P2 and P3 processes. They require these many of, you can say this time for execution or you can say CPU cycles. And then this is the period. So these processes or tasks are periodic in nature. That means once in 10 millisecond, this process will be initiated. Then after 10 milliseconds, again, this process will be initiated in the system. Then again, it will be initiated after 10 milliseconds. So these are periodic in nature. Like P2 will be initiated in the system after every 2 milliseconds. And P3 will be initiated in the system after every 5 milliseconds. Once this process will be initiated, it requires or it can execute only for 1 millisecond duration. It can execute for one millisecond duration. It will be executing for two millisecond duration. Now in this rate monotonic scheduling, a priority of the process will be static in nature and it will be decided based on the period of the process. So a process which will have least period will get the highest priority. So based on the given period, P1 or P2 will get the highest priority in this thing because the period of P2 is less, 2 milliseconds. Then the next priority will go to for P3 and the least priority will be given to P1. Okay, so now let's schedule, prepare a schedule in real time. So let's say we are scheduling the processes and we are considering that initially every process has arrived at zero moment. Okay. Every process has arrived at zero moment. So every process is in ready queue, right? So when we are scheduling at zero moment, we can schedule any process, but the highest priority is assigned to P2. So P2 will be scheduled. Now P2 will take one millisecond. So let's say P2 is taking one millisecond. So it is executing till this, this is one millisecond, let's say, assume that. Now once the P2 will execute in this duration of two millisecond, two is here somewhere. So let's say I'm assuming this is here, here it is actually two because at two millisecond P2 will again arrive in the system. So for this duration, the next process can be scheduled and that is P3. So we can schedule here P3. 
but p3 can execute because it is a kind of preemptive scheduling p3 can execute till 2 only and when p2 will again arrive so here at this moment you consider there are two processes at this moment at 2 there are two processes or you can say all three processes are here which we need to decide which will be scheduled so p1 p2 and p3 p3 was executing but again p2 arrived and p2 is having least period out of these three so p2 will get the priority over remaining two processes and p2 will be scheduled so we can schedule p2 here now once the p2 will be scheduled p2 will execute for next one cycle because p2 require only one cycle so it is executing from 2 to 3 now at 3 we need to decide whether p3 will again start because there is a static priority static priority so if schedule need to decide out of p3 and p1 p3 will be scheduled so remaining one cycle p3 will consume here because P3 was requesting for two millisecond or two cycles, right? So it will be executed till four. Okay, the period of P2 is again over. So P2 will again arrive here at this moment. P2 will again arrive. P3 has been finished here. The period of P3 is 5, so P3 will again arrive here somewhere, if it is 5, if I assume this 5. Now when such kind of case is given actually, and if you want to decide how much cycles you need to represent on this, on this GAN chart or scheduling diagram, we take the LCM of the given periods of all the processes, so we take LCM of all the given processes periods so 10 2 and 5 if you take the lcm of this the lcm will be 10 only so that means we need to draw this particular scheduling chart or grand chart for 10 unit of time so let's say i am assuming this is 6 this is 7 this is 8 here 9 and here it is 10 after 10 whatever we draw here it will repeat so we need not to draw further okay we need not to draw further so whenever you do the real time scheduling focus on the period of given the processes calculate the lcm of them and prepare the GAN chart for that duration right so let's look at at four what is happening at four p1 is again arriving so let me draw the the period of these so let's say you assume that process p1 if i say process p1 is a period of 10 so that means from 1 to 10 duration p1 is going to arrive only once so this is for p1 now if i consider p2 for p2 the period is 2 millisecond so in every 2 millisecond it will again arrive so it has arrived and then in this also it will again arrive then again it will arrive till 6 it will execute once then till 8 it will execute once and then till 10 also again it will arrive and execute so this is p2 now what about p3 so if you consider p3 p3 will arrive here and p3 is having period as 5 so it will keep on like from here to here will arrive only once and here onward till 10 one more time it will arrive and schedule level schedule it so at this moment p1 has again arrived 
P3 has been finished this lifetime and P3 is again going to arrive at 5. P1 is not going to arrive. So only P1, uh, the process, because P1 is waiting, P2 has arrived. So rather than P1, I should write here P2. Okay. So because the period of P2 is 2, so P2 has arrived again here. Okay. So because P3 is over, P1 is waiting, but because P2 is having higher priority, so P2 will be scheduled. Right. Now, once the P2 will be scheduled, P2 will be keep on executing for one cycle. So, till 5, P2 will be executing. Right. Now, here at 5, here at 5, this P3 has been arrived here. P3 has been arrived. And P1 is already in the waiting kind of situation. So here what will happen? Because P3 has arrived here and P3 is having higher priority than P1. So P3 will be scheduled here. Okay. So P3 will be scheduled here. Now P3 will execute and P3 requests two cycles. So P3 will execute let's say till 6. Okay. And at 6 again P2 will arrive. At 6 again P2 will arrive. So when P2 will arrive it will print the P3 and P2 start executing. So from 6 to 7. P2 will execute and once the P2 will be over, P3 will execute and once P3 will be over because P3 was requesting two cycles and it was arrived at 5 again, right? Then here again P2 will arrive, so P2 will be scheduled. Now once the P2 will be scheduled here, and now this P3 is not going to arrive. P3 will arrive at 10. So here, there is no other process. Only P1 is there. So P1 will be scheduled here. Okay. And P1 will execute from 9 to 10. Okay. And again at this moment, here, all processes P1, P2, and P3 will arrive. And the same sequence will be generated again. Okay. So I hope you must be able to understand this scheduling algorithm. Let me again elaborate what is happening here. Whatever the number of processes are given. There is execution time given. And their periods are given. So what is the meaning of period? These processes are cyclic in nature. Periodic in nature. So, in system again and again these processes are initiating after a fixed amount of time. Okay. Because once process arrive at 0, if the period is 5, again it will arrive at 5. Similarly, if a process is having period 10, then it, once it will arrive at 0 moment, then by 10 moment, then 20 moment and so on. Now, when a process is having less period, System need to give more priority. Otherwise, there will be chances the process will not meet the deadline. Okay. So, the priority will be assigned as a static in nature. So, I will write a static priority. Okay. So, a static So, priority calculation is static in nature. Once a process gets priority, it will every time it will get the priority higher than the others. Okay. So at every moment we decide according to the priority and the arrival and the process will be scheduled like this. So I hope this, this algorithm is clear. So I'm closing this session. See you in the next session. Thank you everyone for connecting.